Hey there, thank you for tuning in to SimTech channel in this uh, presentation on components of an electrical substation. So this is presentation number three where we will be talking about the circuit breaker. So by the end of this presentation, you will learn more about the electrical equipment or component that is responsible for preventing uh, thousands and thousands of electrical fires. Even though right now on our screen, we can see there is indeed a fire. So we've got the power transformer that is on fire here. So now the point here is to illustrate that a lot of electrical fires cannot be prevented by a circuit breaker. For instance, this transformer here just exploded probably because of overloading. Okay. And when an overload happen on a transformer, the winding, they're just going to get hot and hot and hot. If the overload is not stopped, it will explode and cause fire. And the circuit breaker here will not going to be able to prevent this fire from happening. The circuit breaker on the other end of this circuit will then break, right? To protect the rest of the circuitry, but will not stop this from happening. Okay, if you want to stop this, that is a subject for another day. You have to ensure that overloading is prevented on your power transformers. Nevertheless, the point is without the circuit breaker, many electrical system will be very difficult to maintain because of human error, faulty equipments and overloading of electrical system, right? So all of those situations can cause a potential fires onto the system and your circuit breaker will have to be able to break the circuit when the rating, right, the current rating have been exceeded. So if the circuit breaker are designed to carry 1000 amp or 1 kilo amps, as soon as they detect a current of over 1000 amp, they will have to break to prevent damage to your system and this is exactly the same way circuit breaker operates in our household by breaking as soon as you connect something that is rated higher than your circuit breaker right then it will just drop so if you connect let's say you connect an, a microwave or you connect a kettle onto a circuit breaker line that is rated for your lighting then that circuit breaker is going to trap because it's not supposed to take that amount of loading. Hence, a circuit breaker is defined as an electrical component that is capable of cutting or breaking an electrical current under uh, abnormal and normal conditions. So that basically means your circuit breaker should be able to break your circuit on normal condition when there is no problem and it should also be able to break your circuit under abnormal condition when there is a fault without causing fire so this is where they talk about uh, the rupturing or the breaking capacity of the circuit breaker so that is that the circuit breaker must be able to break a fault without causing fire so if you place a circuit breaker on a circuit where the fault condition will be higher then the circuit breaker uh, breaking capacity then you are going to cause fire that breaker won't be able to break your circuit without uh, uh, escaping the fire that will engulf because it is not on its rating there are many types of circuit breaker used on electrical substation in this presentation we're going to focus on the most important one and one of which is the oil circuit breaker so here we've got an example of an oil circuit breaker as you can see so this big tank here is basically filled right with oil okay and you've got your bushings and then you can see you've got your high voltage terminal uh, connected so these yellow mark here are your high voltage terminal so your conductor basically so these ones are fixed they don't move and this is the one that moves you can see movable contact now when this one move up and down to break your circuit because your power your 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 voltage your current is supposed to flow this way okay so when the break does then you are breaking the circuit and in doing so you're going to create an arc here okay so that's where your arc is forming this all here is basically 
an arc quenching uh, medium so that basically will help eliminate uh, the the fire the potential fire that can be caused by that arc the next circuit breaker we're going to look at is the air circuit breaker and before we move forward guys if you find this tutorial or presentation useful please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the tech channel that will be highly appreciated now the air circuit breaker is a low voltage circuit breaker uh, around 1000 volt unlike the oil circuit breaker which is used for high voltage substation up to hundreds of kilovolt okay now the air circuit breaker is for low voltage system around 1000 volt now here you can see the air circuit breaker use a compressed air it use a compressed air as the arc quenching medium right that is to stop the uh the arc from further developing in the situation where the circuit breaker is uh action to break the circuit so what is an arc quenching so basically arc quenching is the function of a circuit breaker that is to rapidly extinguish or prevent damage to the contact uh when it interrupt uh, a high uh, current that is passing through okay so it need to break that arc that develop as soon as it interrupt the current and the method of breaking that arc is either uh, using the compressed air or using the oil in the case of an oil circuit breaker and the other circuit breaker is the sf6 circuit breakers so here is an example of the sf6 circuit breaker right so the sf6 circuit breaker just like the old circuit breaker they are both uh suitable for high voltage applications meaning for substation your transmission or distribution substation with several hundreds of kilovolt okay now here you can see you've got your your bushings and you've got your high voltage contact okay now the breakings of your circuit is obviously happening inside so now the box here this is where most of the controls are happening now remember the circuit breaker alone by himself he cannot break the circuit he cannot detect okay he cannot detect whether the circuit have exceeded the the the, the, the rating so he cannot right but obviously if you pass a current or a voltage that is higher than its rating it's going to obviously the contact gap and everything they're just going to to start burning okay but it cannot detect a high current okay before uh, fire start happening so this is where you need your control system here so the control system here is made of your differential protection system where you're going to have your current transformer your relay and all other element that make up your differential protection system so your relay will basically get the signal coming from your current transformers and the signal from your relay will then go to your circuit breaker to basically trap the circuit and if you come inside the sf6 circuit breaker what you basically going to see that this chamber here is basically filled with the sf6 gas okay so this gas here just like the oil this is your arc quenching medium as you can see this is a fixed uh, terminal and this one at the bottom they are the movable so as it goes in and out the arc will be formed here and the sf6 gas is what is going to basically extinguish that arc right away before a uh, fire start to engulf the system so this is basically uh, a brief for the sf6 circuit breaker now the next circuit breaker we're going to look at is the vacuum circuit breaker now the vacuum circuit breaker just like the sf6 circuit breaker which use the sulfur hexafluoride gas as its a quenching medium the vacuum circuit breaker uh, basically use vacuum as the arc quenching medium now this vacuum circuit breaker is really it's a, it's very widely used in the industry in substations as you can see here an example 
so because of what because of its high reliability and low maintenance as you can see now if you can just compare this circuit breaker comparing it with this uh sf6 circuit breaker you can clearly see that this one looks like it's very easy to install and it's very low maintenance and remember reliability is very important in an electrical system because you need to ensure that the continuity of supply is maintained and your equipment are very reliable uh, in that matter so this is it guys for this presentation if you found it useful please don't forget to subscribe to simtech channel and as always uh, give this tutorial a thumbs up and stay tuned for more upcoming presentation on components of an electrical substation until next time cheers